Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have permanently attached my um, muzzle brake onto the barrel. Uh, if you can see, I don't know if you can see the pin beneath the bottom, uh, maybe because um, you know I've blued it and you know it says the same, almost the same color as the muzzle brake. But if you look right there by the washer on the end you can see the, the pin alright uh, one of the things which I did is that I didn't weld the pin alright I'm gonna tell you what did I do alright uh, I did have the idea of using um, a clothes hanger but instead I decided to use this um, this is like a cotter pin um, this is a much more stronger steel than the, the clothes hanger so I decided to use this and drill the hole a little bit bigger and I use this steel uh, when I install the muzzle brake tighten it up I run the drill through the hole in the muzzle brake and drill just a few, you know, a few, you know, thousand of an inch down in the barrel or whatever, which way you want to call the measurement, uh, in the barrel and install the pin. All right, what I did when I installed the pin, I, um, before I installed the pin, I kind of like um, rounded up the end of the pin so that it can like goes deep down into the barrel, you know, because the drill bit has that kind of like a, like a kind of like a cone shape or a bevel so I kind of like round it up so that it goes down in that old flush and then I knocked it in and there was a little piece that protrude out what I did is um, I used the grinder and I grind it down to just a little bit and then I used a punch and I began hitting the top of it and what I realized was that by when I grinded it and I hit it at the same time because it heats up it seemed like the metal heats, heats up and it worked like kind of like um, rivets you know like back in the days when you know they used to make ships they you know used to use rivet when they heat up the rivet and then they hammer the rivets you know so it kind of like expand so it kind of like have that kind of effect so when I use the punch and I tap on the top of it, I realize that you know it goes down you know very flush and flush with the brake. So I realized that I didn't have to weld it because there was no way in which you're gonna get that out because it has swollen in the in the metal, in the muzzle brake and in also in the barrel. And when you rub your finger over it you don't feel anything because I use the punch and a hammer and kinda like tap away in you know the head of it and then afterwards I used this um, gun blue uh, I bought this from um, Bushmaster order it from Bushmaster um, and I used it to blue the, the pin so that's the reason why <coughs> you can you know let's see shine it in a light yep that's it now you can see where it's reflecting right there yep. and that's how you pin your muzzle brake onto your barrel and you can see I have no bayonet lug uh, some guys kind of like you know a little bit skeptical of removing the bayonet lugs you know so oh, you know your gun is muted but you know if you have a rifle such as this you know with no bayonet lug you don't even miss it you know you don't even uh, you know realize that there was a bayonet lug that was supposed to be there but uh, uh, that's a law so you know who cares you don't really need a bayonet lug anyway uh, I just think that it's kinda ugly anyway a bayonet lug so I'm cool with without a bayonet lug um, <clears throat> this is the Yankee Hill uh, muzzle brake non-aggressive as you can see so um, non-aggressive um, 
I also did also have a problem with um with the bolt not locking back because uh, the bolt catching which I get from a uh, model one seal uh, somewhere right here it has a burr on it so it wouldn't go all the way deep into the receiver so I did have to remove it and send it back to model one seal to have it um, have them send me another one so you know that was a kind of like a little bit uh, problem right there and uh, you can see the this is um, a uh, Bushmaster um, fixed stock uh, if I can show you the pin if you look right there you can see where the bolt is like a all in T bolt uh, if you look in between there you probably can see the, the, the pins where they pin the, the stock so it doesn't adjust and that's how you make a legal uh, AR for you know the state such as mine that have an assault weapon ban and this is a 10 round mag if you look right here you can see the punch where the punch in the mag see also right here too where to punch the mag so that it be a 10 round mag so you know lucky you guys you guys can have 30 round mag but uh, I guess when you're shooting you don't even realize that you know you, you have a 10 round mag you know maybe you might maybe you might not but hey you know you just have to obey the law and that's that you know so this is a 10 round mag you can see the punch right here it makes it a 10 round mag and that's how you make uh, your uh, assault rifle uh, legal if you guys are planning on building an AR uh, some guys you kind of like have a little problem building ARs you know to so make it uh, legal but uh, this is one of them uh, if you guys have any question any comment or if you guys like to um, you know post any ratings uh, please do and I'll answer to your um, your posting all right thank you for watching and hope you did enjoy this video bye